On the 18th of August 2022, Scott Hunter delivered a talk and workshop entitled Dark Room Ecology in the Made in Stirling Creative Hub. I'm an environmental artist. Um, I worked as a photographer until 2019 and since then I still consider myself a landscape photographer but I work in very different ways. I look at environmental issues and relate that to photography. So I started developing using developing yes. only black and white film using seaweed and I got images from that and I then looked to incorporate the organic matter from each site into the work. So this project I used moss. Um, I built up my soil library using uh, samples again from significant areas in the site and then to have a public um, output which is why we're here today. So here's some of the images. Um, so it's fennels in the organic matter that's a de developing agent. And the image on the left, that's the moss that I collected and developed these images. When I first started, I, I would, took three different species, but when I done the second species, the results were so drastic. I was like, I need to stick with one species and learn this. So yeah, that's what I'm saying. You know, give yourself a starting point. Yeah. Have you developed these with the mosses? Yeah, all the photos. One. So, one red flag when you're doing this is if your fixer comes out pink, it's underdeveloped. Mm -hmm. Which I hadn't ever had using tried and tested chemicals before. But yeah, I got to learn that, oh no, you know, that's getting out pink. But there's only one role where I got two images out of it, but where it was a bit of a disaster. Sure. But funny, when I went out to Iceland, I came out with this idea, and everyone was like, oh, this is so interesting. <laughs> and I used um, seaweed. It was the first roll I've ever done. It just came out completely blank. Not even any numbers down the side. I was like, how does that happen? So I've got friends on the, in the East Fjords, I was speaking to them, and they were like, what species did you use? I was like, well, it was like a rack. They were like, not a rack. I said, it must be that. I'm used to bladder rack, but this was a bit thicker, you know. Uh, they were like, yeah, well, we tried to use that to tone cyanotypes, and it completely bleached them. Yeah. I was like, well, there must be something in that species. Yeah. But yeah, it was so clean. I've never, I've never seen a piece of foam so <laughs> clean. I was like, really? I'm, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm talking about a starting point. That is the worst result you want. <laughs> Well, I was looking to broaden my understanding of photography, and particular landscape photography, and how I could use the materiality of the landscape in the work itself. So yeah, once I discovered that anything containing fennels can develop black and white film, uh, I started with mint tea as a starting point, and then worked up to working with seaweed, and then working with moss at the band of munitions depot. So I'm constantly experimenting with different, different plant species. I plan to expand this to um, fungi as well. And really the point of today's workshop is to get as many people involved in this as possible and get them thinking about the materials they're using. So what you need to invest in to do this is um, yeah, you need a dark room, a uh, bathroom without a window, or a changing bag, which I'll be using today. And then once that's done, we can do everything in the light. And the recipe I'll give you is for what we're going to do today. So I'm 120 full. So what I've made today, 225 grams of moss. Moss was challenging because of its water retention. So I, I weigh it wet, because mm. if you don't, it just absorbs all of that moisture and you're, you're really squeezing it to try and get the water out. So 500 ml water, 40 grams sodium carbonate and 12 grams of vitamin C. Very simply, just boil for 10 minutes, whatever you're, you're doing, mm -hmm. and leave it overnight. 
In the morning, I'll add the sodium carbonate and the vitamin C. Uh, I use a clear container for that, so you can see that all the salt crystals are dissolving. The reason I was saying about having enough uh, room at the top of your beaker is it fizzes up with the vitamin C. I stop or I wash, but I generally just wash this because developing agents uh, it doesn't really need stock, but you can use uh, acid for that if you want to completely arrest that process. Um, so vinegar or uh, lemon, squeeze of lemon would do. And then commercial fix of that's per instructions. So what I'm going to do is dip it in the developer and then just lift it slightly. So you'll see how the film's changed on the emulsion side to very light. And then I'm going to time how long the piece that's submerged in the solution takes till it glues the same colour as the top side. So that would do. So that's 70 seconds. So that, that's around 20, say 22 minute developing time. So I'm taking the time in seconds and dividing it by three and that'll give me an approximate time in minutes. So agitate for the first minute. Everyone's going to have their own technique to this. Uh, Mine's is a circulation. Um, it then gets agitated every 10 seconds for subsequent uh, minutes after that. I get about five to six in 10 seconds, my mate Pete gets four. So you develop your own way, Keep make sure it stays consistent because agitation affects your developing time. To avoid harmful fixer, salt water. But you need to fill the water with salt till it stops dissolving. The problem with this is it needs to be left for a minimum of 24 hours. Really, within that time, you want it to be getting agitated. Right? So that, that's the issue at the minute, is trying to find um, a quicker solution mm -hmm. to fix the image. You have to agitate this part of yeah. the process. Yeah, so same thing, first minute, constant, and then 10 seconds for every minute. Yeah, it was fantastic because uh, on the one hand we got to hear about Scott's work and the projects that he's been doing, but on the other we got to have a practical demonstration and it was really eye-opening for me. Um, I was aware of the fact that you could use the phenolic content of various plant forms uh, to do that, but I'd never seen it done. And you know, when you, you see it in practice, uh, it's so much more powerful than just reading about it on the internet. I'm really not keen on having to buy chemicals online and I've always felt guilty about literally just sticking things down the sink and I don't want to damage the environment really uh, with that and I don't need to anymore so that's precisely what I'm going to take away from this on top of that all of the ingredients that are used for the, the chemistry of it are cheap they're basically f almost freely accessible. So that's definitely what I'll be taking away from this. I can do it cheaper and I can make it much better for the environment. I think we all have to be very cognizant of the climate change that's happening right now and do whatever we can on a personal level to adapt in various ways to the, the new circumstances we find ourselves in. Well, with Instagram, hashtag is Darkroom Ecology. So simply tag the images Darkroom Ecology. I'll pick them up. And if there's enough uh, in terms of volume, you can look at perhaps doing a blog or um, even a, a small booklet or something like that. Uh, be a digital booklet. Uh, but yeah, if there's enough quantity, then perhaps it can be a blog or even a website where we're sharing information but also shared content.